Walt Disney made a lot of money. Jason Momoa, my bits. Not giving a fuck. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie, and today we are back with another dun dun mukbang. Woo! Guys, I am excited. I'm also not excited. I'm also really nervous because today we are going to be eating super wide honey. Say it. Take it away. Papa Deli. Papa Deli. <laughs> he calls it Papa Deli. So we're gonna be eating some wide, extra wide Papa Deli. Papadelli noodles with some shrimp and also I got this in the mail today and it is the new and exclusive to Korea because I ordered it on eBay for a bajillion dollars. The new and exclusive real spaghetti sauce. Or no, it says pasta sauce. It's the nuclear spaghetti pasta sauce. This chicken bread is out of control. It's not a chicken bread, it's a ramen bread. Oh. <laughs> this Tyson chicken bread. Isn't this Samyang? <laughs> yeah, it's Samyang. So Samyang. it's supposed to be the nuclear chicken, but in pasta sauce. And so with this giant pile of steaming nuclear pasta noodles in front of me, I have just decided one thing and one thing only. Everything is by Mark Manson. <laughs> and if you guys have never listened to that book, honestly, it is life-changing. And I have actually been listening to the audiobook using Audible. So thank you, Audible, for sponsoring today's video. If you guys haven't heard of Audible, they have the largest selection of audiobooks, audio shows. They even added news, comedy, honestly, anything you can listen to, you could probably find it on there. And it's perfect for when you're going to the gym, you got long drives in the car. I always listen to Audible because I just feel like it keeps me focused on the task. It keeps my mind occupied when I'm doing just small things. And I feel like listening to books really helps me get into it and I can just really free my mind into whatever I'm trying to imagine through it and everything is fucked by Mark Manson has been my go-to audiobook right now if you guys have never heard of Mark Manson he wrote the subtle art of not giving a fuck <laughs> you guys know I'm not a huge fan of self-help books, but honestly, it's taught me a lot that pain is inevitable pain is unavoidable but suffering is an option I'm gonna take that message that I heard through Audible from Mark Manson. This is gonna be the message of the day, huh? Message of the day. Brought it to the table. Here you go. So if you guys wanna start listening to that book with me or any other books, I have a couple recommendations. Make sure to text 500 500 Stephanie Sue or go to audible.com slash Stephanie Sue for an exclusive 30 day free trial. Plus, they'll even throw in an audiobook for free of your choosing and two Audible originals for free. Thank you, Audible, for sponsoring today's video. And let's get into the nuclear. Pasta. Get to suffering. <laughs> suffering is an option, honey. Okay, let's okay, see I'm sorry, the options I'm today. Sorry. Let's see the options today. I'm gonna grab some mother in law's kimchi, which kind of makes it feel like I. Should this be spicy? No. Oh, this one smells good. This is Why a good Why do you call it mother-in-law's kimchi? Isn't that like a negative thing? That's what I thought too. This is what the packaging looks like. We threw three of them in here with <clears throat> two bags of pappardelle. But we're going to try it. I think there's four it. bags, boo. You only have one left. You ordered five. Oh my god, we threw four bags? Yeah. Why did I do that? I must be nuts. Oh! Oh! Listen, boo boo. Do you like it? I changed my mind. This is suffering. Oh, it's so crazy. I don't know if it's good or if it's so spicy that my mouth is filling with like so much saliva. It's like overloading with saliva. The flavor doesn't really taste like spaghetti to you, does it? Not to yeah. me. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know there's like Americanized yeah. Asian food? Mm-hmm. This is like Asianized Italian yeah. pasta. Yeah. <laughs> it's very interesting. That's such an accurate description. It doesn't yeah. have like that creaminess of yeah. like a spaghetti. It's like imagine mixing maybe Jolly Bee with nuclear sauce. Okay, let's just move it. I'm just gonna. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, you're pink. Oh my god. 
I feel like that Disney movie where like the villain morphs into a princess. So there she goes from this. To like, hello princess. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, do you want some dumplings on the side or like just me? <laughs> you know the shrimp is not as bad. You can't use the shrimp. Don't lie to me. I know you're lying. Okay, let's try the shrimp. Wow. Holy cow. Wow. Okay, with the rice, I am tasting more of the pasta sauce. With the rice. Mm hmm. We're gonna jump right in to some conspiracy theories. These are ones that I find to be increasingly entertaining, increasingly just kind of weird, and everything about it is unsettling, right? And some of these are questions that I had prior to finding out about that already people have theories to it. And it all starts with Disney and Pixar. Disney and Pixar are by far strongest power couples that have ever graced the movie industry, the entertainment industry. And we all know that there's a lot of urban legends about Disneyland, Disney World, Disney Parks, abandoned Disney Parks, Walt Disney himself. But I recently got invited to Disneyland. Um, for a VIP tour and I completely mm -hmm. fell in love so I'm a sellout okay and I don't believe in those anymore I'm just kidding yes I do but I'm just gonna give it some time so Disney doesn't hunt me down oh yeah I didn't tell you guys about the VIP tour guys I went on a VIP tour of Disneyland and now she wants shut out of that mm-hmm I saw Lamar Odom So this first conspiracy starts with Walt Disney himself and Walt Disney's mother because have you noticed a trend? Hold on. Oh, so spicy. I don't know how you do it. This all started when Snow White, the original movie, The Snow White and Seven Dwarfs came out, which by the way, there's a whole conspiracy on that. Well, this turned out to be a false conspiracy because technically Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs was adapted. It's an adaptation of a long time ago folk tale that already existed of the direct translation turned Snow White's name into Snow White, right? But a lot of people suspected back in the day that it was actually about Walt Disney's affiliation, his love, his appreciation, for the substance, aka known as Snow no. White, sold by yours truly, El Chapo. Sorry. <laughs> so because... <laughs> no. Yeah. And they said that the seven dwarves were the different like stages of going through that substance abuse. You get sleepy. You get hungry. You get mopey. You get happy. You're I didn't like, even know. It makes sense. And so someone was like, wait, I feel like this has to do with his substance abuse. Okay. Oh, so they all have their own personality trait. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Well, you just thought there were seven... I just thought there were seven dwarfs. <laughs> Who just hang out? No. Doesn't win Best Supporting Actor or Actress? When Snow White first came out in the movie industry, this was in like the 50s, I believe, it was mm -hmm. not known to be a good selling type of storyline. So back in Hollywood, they really wanted different types of storylines. They liked those black and white movies. They didn't really think, you know, seven dwarfs that were sleepy, mopey, hungry, and some princess who was asleep was going to do well in theaters. But uh -huh. Walt Disney, and did you know Walt Disney had a brother who invested in Walt Disney with him? They decided, hey, we're going to literally finance our entire lives, get all of our money, and put Put that shit into Snow White, the mother freaking movie, because we have such high hopes. If you if you know the story of Walt Disney, oh my gosh, he is a beautiful man with a lot of beautiful dreams. But he's also known to be um, a very controversial figure. Anyways. Didn't you say she, there, him and his wife are crazy in love? Yeah, that's what it seemed from the outside. Mm -hmm. dun, dun, dun. You know. Sorry. Mm mm. Okay, so they invested into Snow White. Mm-hmm. And it paid off. That was their first massive hit. Critical acclaim. Critical praise. 
They also made a ton of movie. I think it was the highest grossing film of that era. And so with that money, they just had so much money. I'm talking sh money. Walt Disney made a lot of sh money that time, okay? And so he was just blowing cash. They bought a new studio. They started investing in new movies like Bambi, Pinocchio. They were having a bunch of things in production. And they were like, this is it. This is the start of Disney productions, right? Uh-huh. And they also decided, hey, now that we've pretty much lived in California for a while, now that we have all of this extra cash mm -hmm. why don't we buy our parents a beautiful home in north hollywood mm -hmm. right because right now they're living in portland oregon bring mm -hmm. them over to north hollywood we're so busy these days we can't go and see them we're bad kids but if they're here we can always go visit them mm -hmm. and so walt and ron they invested a bunch of money buying this north hollywood beautiful home Mm -hmm. And Walt was, I believe, the one in charge of, you know, setting up all the other things. Setting up a furnace so that they can stay warm during the winter months or during night, etc. You mm -hmm. know, getting a refrigerator, etc. So Walt is furniture shopping? Mm. Okay. Are we, so we're talking about the story about Walt Disney himself. Yes, this Not one. Snow White. Mm-mm. Oh. <clears throat> He bought this with Snow White money. <laughs> so, Walt Disney, El Chapo, same person. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. He's giving me that, don't say that look. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. You're like the, the total opposite of the branding. I know. Branding though, but... Honey, you have a lot of balls today, huh? I know. I know. What's happening? I really don't know. What's got into your head? That's what I'm saying. I'm just kidding. I love Disney. Even with rice, it's so spicy. I know, I need a break. So they bought the house, they put in a furnace, they put in all the things that they need. In October of that year, just like this month, they brought in their parents from Portland, Oregon and said, Mom and Dad, Snow White did really well and now we bought you this home. Please live in it, we love you so much. And so the Elder Disneys, they moved right on in, right? Uh -huh. Now, almost a month exactly later, November 26th, the day before my birthday, the mom Disney, uh -huh. mother Disney, uh -huh. passed away. Now, what did she pass away from? Not old age, not from a sickness that she had developed, but because there was a carbon monoxide leak coming from the furnace that was installed in the home by Walt Disney's people. Is this urban legend or this no, a true this story? No, this truly happened. And so Ron and Walt were thinking, you know, why? What happened? What could have possibly gone wrong? You know, carbon monoxide is a silent killer, like they say. And so they bring in a bunch of experts to, you know, check out the home, make sure everything was done correctly because the only thing that's changed is the move. She couldn't have been that stressed out from the move. She couldn't have been that tired from the move that she asphyxiated and passed away. Uh -huh. And so they did all of this research and come to find out the experts said, Whoever installed the furnace has no knowledge of all the furnace requirements so that you're not leaking carbon monoxide or gas into your home. Mm -hmm. Or they do, and they had blatant disregard for it because none of it was done up to code. So who did it? Lowe's? <laughs> you got some balls today too! <laughs> and so they start looking into it, and Walt, sure enough, I believe he was the one in charge of hiring people to install the furnace, right? Uh -huh. And so he took on so much guilt. He was literally heartbroken that he had bought this home, moved his parents here, and he installed the furnace or his people installed the furnace and his mom died from it. Mm -hmm. To the point where it's rumored that if you worked with Walt Disney or if you knew him, anytime you brought up his mother, he would completely be very snappy. At one point, his young daughter, Sharon, even asked, hey daddy, where are grandparents? Like after, you know, the grandfather had passed, where are they buried? He goes, I don't want to talk about it. He just would never talk to anyone about his mother's death. Yeah. And that got to a lot of people because there's one, one thing that you always remember in a lot of Disney movies. The evil queen. No. Stepmom. The hero almost never has a maternal figure. Why is that? Oh yeah, the mother always dies. Yeah, 
or is never in the story. And so urban legend has it, Walt Disney couldn't even bear to see the creation of maternal love, otherwise he would break down. He would rather act like it doesn't exist so that he doesn't have to see the love because even in something like Lion King, you see the dad and the son bonding and then the dad dies and you see the heartbreak and everybody cries, right? But you never really see the mom die or they die right away that you never see the build up that you build this connection with the mom mm. all these movies the mom either dies right That's away so true yeah. because mother usually like the the love from mother usually is yeah. the bigger selling point than than the dad and the, the dad, son the or yeah oh. so they said you never see a maternal figure in it which is very very interesting now some people could argue and say hey well a lot of these are adaptations and back in the day in literature and all these folk tales they would always kill off the mom because that would force the hero it's an easy way to force the kid to grow up really quick because mm -hmm. when you look at you know stories just stories not in real life okay don't at me but think about harry potter when the parents are dead it forces harry potter to grow up really quickly and have these experiences that a lot of his friends who do have his parents still in their life they don't have to experience right mm -hmm. and so it's a very easy way to have a coming of age story and that's the type of story that disney is known for coming of age stories becoming you know more and more mature and like doing something heroic and courageous right what's but then that, what's that thing called development of character yeah what character development <laughs> we love character development what does that mean it's like developing as a character like you go for like khaleesi she went from like i don't want to be married off to this cal drogo and then all of a sudden she's like jason momoa my bitch yeah, sorry. I'm getting real ballsy today. They just grow up and they're like, you know, stronger, mm -hmm. better. They just glow up or grow up? Both. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so a lot of people are saying, well, that's not necessarily true because that's a huge literature thing that people will do. It's just easy that way, right? Uh -huh. And uh, by the way, a lot of his stories are adaptations from old folk tales. Mm -hmm. So it's not really a Disney problem. It's the fact that he just recreates a lot of these stories and they don't have a mom. Mm -hmm. Well then, what about things like Finding Nemo? Things that Pixar and Disney create together. Things that even down the line, they're not adaptations. Mm -hmm. They're new stories that have never been told. Why mm -hmm. is the mom almost always never there? So it seems to be this perpetuated urban legend that none of the creators, the Imagineers is what they call it, <laughs> I'm such a Disney lover now. Um, <laughs> that they don't want to dishonor Walt Disney's legacy of always not having a mom figure in the story. Is there any story from Disney with a mother? There's always an evil stepmom or someone becomes a mom figure. Like the new Maleficent, like Angelina Jolie is That's like... That's never good though. Yeah, but they never have like a true biological I'm your mom bit story. Wait, Nemo doesn't have a mom either. Mom dies in the beginning. Mm. Mm -hmm. What about the father? Father lives. Mm. Have you never seen Nemo? <laughs> Have you never? Do you know the premise know. of Nemo? Thank you for bringing up Nemo because Nemo is the biggest theory of today. I don't want to trigger anybody, but <laughs> I mean, I briefly read about it when I was young, but boy, it's just not my childhood. I'm sorry. <laughs> Do they do subs or dubs? Like when you, in China, if they play a Disney movie, mm. is it voiced over with the Chinese language? Like mm. Mandarin or Cantonese? Mm -hmm. Or is it subtitles of like Mandarin? I don't know. I never really watched Disney growing up. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so I don't get this happiest place in the world conspiracy. Like, Yeah. Can't relate. Wow. Wow, wow, Have wow. Have you ever watched the Black Cat Policeman? <laughs> He's like, Have you ever watched the kid with the big head and the, exactly. the dad with the small Have you skinny ever watched head? That? <laughs> exactly. Monkey King. Have you ever watched Monkey King? You made me watch Monkey King with you. I didn't make you watch. Oh, you watched a movie. You never watched the cartoon. There's a cartoon? Yeah. The cartoon is the OG OG. Really? Is it good? Yeah. There's the, the TV movie show. The movie was good. I thought the movie was You good. watched one of the <coughs> weird sequels. Oh, uh, it was a little weird. <coughs> I remember looking at you like, oh, you like this. Yeah, okay. no. Monkey King is weird. Yeah, Monkey King's a little weird. Yeah, but it's really good. Do it's... you only like it because you are a monkey? No, everybody Not likes derogatory. Monkey. His Chinese. Everybody likes Monkey King. Oh. So monkey King? Special. I guess Monkey King is like Disney. You watch mm. it every single year. Wait, what's like the Disney equivalent in China of a company? 
There is not really company. It's it's like Monkey King. <laughs> you sound like a crazy person right now. Yeah, it's Monkey King. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. And you know what's interesting? There's also conspiracy about Monkey King too. What yeah, about yeah, what? Yeah. Um, so the gist of the Monkey King story is they're they're all monks. They're going to the monks. east. Monks. Yeah. Sorry, when you say monkey and monks too closely together, I'm like thinking, what kind of monkey is he talking about? I'm like, is it a type of monkey? Monks. Monks. Yes. Okay. That's what I say. <laughs> I'm just clarifying for the viewer. Okay. okay. <laughs> they're all monks. There's the oh shit. How did I say? It? Shifu, the main master monk, mm -hmm. and then he's a he's a human, and he went out there. Oh man, I can start like an 81 episodes on this. <laughs> <laughs> Me regrets ever asking what it was the even question no, no, I no, no, asked. No. Okay. okay, okay, okay. Really quickly, he's uh, he's the main one. He lives in a world that there's a lot of um, ghosts and spirits mm. and, and, and devils and mm -hmm. all of that, right? He lives in that world. And there's an awesome world with all the goddess and Buddha, Buddha and all of that. So this is actually being based on a true story. There was someone he traveled from, I think somewhere from uh, China all the way up to get, um, he traveled all the way there to get that and then bring it back to spread to the world. He's believed that they were reborn and reborn and reborn. They're so pure. They're so pure uh. that the legend has it. Any uh, monster or devil take a bite of his meat, they will live forever. So he literally a walking meal, a whole ass snack. Yeah, the, but the <laughs> most delicious, basically every monster in the world is going crazy over him. So the Buddha said, I will give you three devil, three monsters. These three will protect you. Oh. And if they can protect you all the way to the monkey king was the main, the big, he's the first one he recruited and he's so freaking powerful. He, so is monkey king good? Monkey king was, he's supposed to be a monkey devil. But so is he good? He, his nature is bad. Oh. But this whole way you see the main master teaching him how to be a good one throughout the whole mm. journey. He is so powerful. So if he was bad, it'd be so bad for everyone. It was bad. Eventually the biggest Buddha um, lock him under his uh, mountain for 500 year years. Okay, so do people, um, sorry, I'm trying to phrase this correctly. Do people believe that the Monkey King is Monkey King kind of known as an urban legend or it truly happened? In real life. It's an urban legend, baby. Sorry, you never want to <laughs> offend no, people. So Monkey King, he uh, here's his skills, okay? He is so talented, yes. he can turn into anything. Listen! <laughs> but he always has flaws. So one time he turned into a, a temple to fool <laughs> someone, okay? But because he has a tail, mm -hmm. so there's a his tail turned into a flag. A flagpole? Flagpole right behind the oh, temple. No. So they look at this temple and they say, Hmm. Why is there a flag <laughs> pool right behind the temple? This doesn't make any sense. Okay, so the person that traveled is based on a real story. Mm -hmm, yeah. But Monkey King is the comedic. Yes, aspect. all of that exactly okay. to see to show how difficult yeah. the whole journey. But was. what is the theory behind it? I can't see there being a sinister thing. Oh, he's uh, like I forgot what I was talking no, no, about. No, no, no. So there's actually a uh, this this whole thing is a TV show, but. When this book was first uh, written hundreds of years ago, yeah. in the book, it's a lot darker than the real story. So it's almost like that Disney story. Mm. You see how Disney, it's so dark. So apparently this monkey king eats people, kills people, does all these crazy things. But now on TV, it's a very family friendly yeah. show. It's almost like Disney. Everybody watch it together. But it's actually a lot, a lot darker. Yeah. Okay, so it is family friendly. Oh, oh yeah, family friendly. It's, it's. Because yeah. whatever you showed me didn't seem too family friendly. Oh, the one you watched the yeah. movie? Oh, that, that's, that's something else. Hmm. Anyways, I don't know if any of that makes sense no, to no, you. No, no, no. It made a lot of sense. Yeah, that's when I hear Disney, that's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. So Finding Nemo is not similar at all to the Monkey King. Sorry. Okay, I'm going to explain the plot line just so I could refresh y'all's minds because I was a huge fan of Finding Nemo or the Finding Dory series. I don't know why. I just, I don't like the like more animated looking ones. I feel like I'm more into like the princesses. I'm a basic bitch, okay? So if you guys are unfamiliar with the story or you forgot or because he doesn't know, I'm going to explain it. So there's, I know the story. there's clownfish. Well, let me explain the beginning oh. of the story. <laughs> I like babe. I know the plot line. Babe. <laughs> okay. So in 
the beginning of the movie, if you guys don't know, Nemo and his dad and all of his family are part of the clownfish species in the great waters, right? Mm -hmm. And did you know all of the writers, the producers, all the directors, anyone who worked on the Finding Nemo series, they actually went, underwent an aquatic life training so that they could understand all of like the features mm -hmm. of each species, right? Mm -hmm. And so Nemo belonged to the beautiful clownfish species. Now, What's very interesting about the clownfish species is that they have tons and tons and tons of eggs at once, okay, like most fish. And so the disaster happened early on in the beginning of the story where the dad, Finding Nemo's dad, the dad, right, he and his wife were hanging out, she had a bunch of eggs, she pooped them out, and they were hanging out when all of a sudden a barracuda came by and ooh, barracuda its way all through the pack. Ate the whole, all the fish? Ate all the fish, right? Except for the dad. So all of the eggs had died along with the mom. The mom died. Ooh, right? Mm -hmm. So the mom passes away and the dad comes back to see that they're all dead. And he sees just the terror, the destruction that the barracuda had left by. And he's about to swim away when right in his sight he sees a tiny little egg. And he says, oh my god. But that egg was slightly damaged. And out comes Nemo with the bad fin because the egg had been damaged by the barracuda. But out of all the eggs, only thus one egg had survived. And that was Nemo. And that's why the dad becomes so incredibly overprotective of Nemo. And he has a bad fin, so he's not oh, the best swimmer, I right? I know he had a bad fin. He had a bad fin. Oh. Yeah, and his entire dream when you have an overprotective parent is to touch butts. I'm sorry? <laughs> he's trying to very calmly. Excuse me? Pardon? Touch butts? Touch butts. And so his one thing he always wanted to do is go up to a boat and touch the butt of a boat. Oh. Right, so he goes, I want to go touch the butt. I don't think he says it like that. Probably more family friendly than this, right? And so that's his life goal. And the dad is so upset because you don't know what's up there. You stay down here with me. You don't go up there, okay? And so one day the dad is talking to the teachers of the school of fish. Huh, clever. And all of a sudden he turns around and Nemo had gone. And now Nemo, what you don't see, gets scared scooped up by a scuba diver and taken into the boat of the butt that he just touched mm -hmm. because the scuba diver wants to keep this clownfish. Ooh, goldfish, yum, fun, right? Like in an aquarium, okay, as a gift, right? Uh -huh. And so Nemo goes on this journey. He ends up in a dentist's office. The dentist person wants to give it to his niece, who's a fish killer. She literally has killed all the fish he's given her, and he has a tank in the dentist's office. Mm -hmm. It's a long story. Either way, his dad goes on a journey to go find Nemo, okay? Finding Nemo, hence the movie name. He meets some sharks. He meets some turtles, some seagulls. Essentially, he goes through a journey through the ocean, the Sydney Harbor, meets Dory, the one that forgets everything, and finally is reunited with Nemo at the end, right? Mm -hmm. Now, here is the theory behind it all. Uh -huh. Finding Nemo, that's the name of the movie. Nemo in Latin means no one. So the name of the movie would be Finding No, no One. one. The and dad forgets. So, <laughs> no. He doesn't have a kid. Um, the movie theory is that all the eggs had died. Mm. And the dad came up with Nemo so mm. he wouldn't lose his mind. So essentially, what you see in the movie, right? And I rewatched this clip of the movie is that he looks at where all the destruction was, and it's almost like this blue haze was cast upon the scene, right? Mm -hmm. And he's about to swim away, and then he does one last look and he sees the egg. Mm. And the truth is, there was no egg, mm. but he's like swimming away and he's like, I can't do this. Mm. And so he turns back, and suddenly there's an egg. Right? And so he goes on this journey and every person he meets, every group of species he meets is another stage of grief. So you have denial because he meets some sharks and they go, we're not eating fish no more, you know? They're in denial of their primal instinct to eat fish. What are you gonna eat? And at the end, Dory, she bleeds a little bit and the sharks go crazy because they smell the blood of a fish. Right? Yeah. And so you go through denial. And Dory, the reason that Dory is so important to the movie is the fact that she forgets. And so they're saying the most important part of pain and loss is that eventually you must forget. So they said that there is actually nobody. He's finding no one because they all died. You know what, boo? What? This just sounds like any literature class. <laughs> okay, you want me to back it up with some more interesting facts then? Sure. Did you know clownfish? 
Yeah. They have a very interesting relationship with each other. So clownfish, they work very differently from most relationships of the human species because you have one female who mates with a ton of males, okay? Yeah. And so they keep giving her more eggs and she keeps having eggs and the whole thing is for the clownfish to eventually take over the world. That's their entire life goal, end game, right? And so you've got this clownfish making a ton of babies and if the mom ever dies, the female of the pack ever dies, mm -hmm. one of the male will turn into the next female because they're born with oh, both yeah. organs. I heard of that. Yes. So people also have the theory that it's very interesting because in the beginning of the movie, it's the dad looking for finding Nemo, but by the time that they find Nemo, it's Nemo's mom. So there's that. It turned at the end. It was the mother. It should well, be. People were saying it yeah, should be because that's mother. how clownfish work. And yeah. if all the Finding Nemo people that worked on it took aquatic life school, they would know that's how clownfish mate. So mm. I'm just saying. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Still, it sounds like a literature class. <laughs> okay. Here's this. <laughs> Wally is Satan. Whoa, that's a really aggressive claim. <laughs> the robot? Mm hmm. The robot is mm -hmm. Satan? Think about it. The robot that Wally falls in love with, her name is Eve. Mm -hmm. And Wally is alone on Earth in mm -hmm. destruction, cleaning up the mess. Why? There should have been other Wallys. There should have been other robots cleaning up Earth's destruction. Why because was there only. Because he was the last one. Why? Where Everything did they go? else was too old or broken or. They out said of he battery. killed them. That Wally? Yeah. Anyway. Sweet Wally killed him. <laughs> Me getting like, triggered. Wally. Killed him! <laughs> Wally yeah. killed them all because he's a hoarder and he wanted to keep all the nice things. Okay, to hoarder himself. makes sense. He's a hoarder. Shh. And so he wanted to, you know he what? He looks like a hoarder. <laughs> Do you work for Pixar? And so he killed all the other robots, right? And now he's hoarding up all these material goods because mm -hmm. that's the, this gets very religious, which by the way, I must have you guys know that I am not biased. I'm not very religious, but I respect all religions. So I hope this takes no offense. And I also <laughs> hope this doesn't feel like me preaching something because I'm not, right? Uh -huh. And so they're saying that he is like Satan and he is too obsessed with material goods within the Christianity faith is not a good thing you don't want to do that they always say don't be materialistic because that is a sin right mm -hmm. and so he's obsessed with these material goods kills off all of his robot friends this mm -hmm. young robot by the name of eve comes in and he pretty much tempts her with this tiny little seed of wildlife almost like what you say an apple from the apple tree back in the day in religion and so then eve brings this seedling back up to the mothership where all of these humans are technically living in paradise why you ask because they're not plagued by the things that in the bible are known as plagues right I was, which means as what? are known as bad things for humankind uh, such as war famine diseases death you know murders etc those are all bad things that humanity is going to experience because at first it wasn't created that way mm -hmm. and so they're all living their dreams in paradise no conflict no need for anything they don't work for anything and they just have all these robots serving their every whim mm -hmm. and then they see this seed and the captain is the only one that knows about earth everyone at this point has been multiple generations past they don't know that earth exists but the captain on that mothership knows about earth and he goes huh that seed that seed means we can build something on earth again uh -huh. and so he goes on this massive mission right eve and the the little wally and then the little seedling and they eventually make it down to earth and at the end you see them doing agricultural things fishing etc right mm -hmm. so two things happens at the end well first of all they're saying that this is the start of what humankind is known as in the Bible. Because after you tempt Eve, now they have to work for food. Now they have to work for things. It's no longer paradise, right? And on top of that, how? How did they get it? You have one seedling, but then all of a sudden you see these people with fish, species, building buildings, all this plant, you know? How, right? Because they probably brought some specimen to the mothership, AKA Noah's Ark. So that was a whole conspiracy. There's a whole Disney Pixar conspiracy too. That all of them like just spread some weird messages. I don't know. I think I this think is a bunch of people <laughs> that have too much free time, he said. Exactly. <laughs> That's what you think about everything. It's someone who's <laughs> thinking too much. Thinking too much into a situation. I don't know, man. Sometimes it's not that complicated. Sometimes you know, Sometimes. it's just a robot that's a hoarder. 
<laughs> That's all. Someone give that robot a TLC show. <laughs> you don't believe any of it? Do you believe the Walt Disney one? The mother one? Mm. Yeah, that's kind of weird. That's kind of sad, right? Especially because even the new Disney movies are like that, not just the remakes. Yeah. Because I just feel like usually mother's love is something they always emphasize on. Huh? Mm-hmm. But the fact that there's always no mom. Yeah. So weird. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but apparently Walt Disney really loved his wife. You know what Why he do you gifted say that, her? Apparently? He gifted her a perfumery shop in Disneyland. It's called Miss Antoinette's uh, Perfumery, I believe. So she can sell her perfume that she makes. She loves perfume. So he built a perfumery shop for her so she can go there. Mm -hmm. I think that's marketing, but I like it. <laughs> and he has like this beautiful butterfly thing in a restroom because she loves butterflies. Yeah, good marketing. <laughs> okay. That's cute though. It's really cute. It's a cute love story. It's really cute. So cute. Really cute. He even opens doors for her. Really cute. That's it's like, marketing. <laughs> <laughs> he tells her he loves her. Marketing. It's Disney. What do it's you expect? It's Disney. <laughs> it's cartoon. Let me know in the comments. Do any of these sound viable or do they sound like a bunch of nonsense to you? But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.